Our closer look now at what could be the most consequential move of the Obama presidency on climate change. The EPA will release their new regulations to curb carbon emissions from power plants tomorrow, the first round in a massive political fight. ABC's Ron Claiborne has the details. In Just America, this Saturday in his weekly address, the president priming his pitch on climate change. As president and as a parent, I refuse to condemn our children to a planet that's beyond fixing. His big announcement Monday, unprecedented steps to reduce carbon pollution, bypassing Congress, a step all but certain to provoke a political firestorm. Here's what he's reportedly going to call for. A 20% cut in carbon emissions from power plants by 2020. The administration would leave it up to states how to get there. Options include turning to natural gas, wind, solar, and energy efficient technologies. But all of those changes would come at the expense of coal burning power plants which release 30% of America's carbon pollution. This 45-year-old coal plant in Jersey City, New Jersey, illustrates the challenge. It has already spent hundreds of millions of dollars to comply with existing EPA regulations. The concern is that any new requirements could drive up energy costs or cause plants like this one to close. Environmental regulations that are coming to effect will retire 60% of today's coal fleet. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce says the new regulations would shrink the economy by an estimated $51 billion and cost 224,000 jobs a year. The climate has been changing forever and will continue to change. And we do know that humans are contributing to CO2 emissions. I think the question in front of everybody is what do we do about it? How do we do it? And at what cost? This is too big of a hit for the economy. Dire predictions that the president says we've heard before. Special interests and their allies in Congress will claim that these guidelines will kill jobs and crush the economy. Let's face it, that's what they always say. He argues doing nothing is even riskier. For this week, Ron Claiborne, ABC News, Jersey City, New Jersey. And let's bring in our experts, Francis Beinecke, the president of the National Resources Defense Council, and Hal Quinn, the president and CEO of the National Mining Association. We saw those uh, statistics that Ron Claiborne talked about. The Chamber of Commerce says this will cost about $50 billion a year, increase the average family's energy cost by about $200. But Paul Krugman has pointed out that that's actually a relatively small fraction of the size of the economy and average household income. Well, what we're going to see are policies that reach deep into every economic sector. And then everybody, Americans' life, uh, when we've talked about a set of policies this is the third in a series that is really uh, designed to drive out low cost electricity and replace it with uh, higher cost, more expensive and less reliable electricity. So we've heard about flexibility from the president and the administration, but what they're referring to is cap and trade programs. And we look at those states that have been using them, California, for instance, their electricity is 45 percent higher than the average electricity rate in the country and New England, 36% higher. Question is, is it worth the cost? <clears throat> it absolutely is worth the cost. And actually, our analysis shows that this could be done very efficiently economically. One of the major ways to make this work is to invest in energy efficiency, which will actually save the consumer money. And we've seen that happen all over the country. Our energy system is getting cleaner. We're relying more on efficiency and more on renewables, and our emissions are going down. The purpose of this rule is to really close the loophole on carbon pollution, reduce emissions as we've done with lead, arsenic, and mercury, and improve the health of the American people and unleash a new economic opportunity. And, and Mr. Quinn, do you accept the premise that this is a problem that has to be addressed, that the science is clear? We can address the problem. We can lower emissions. Coal uh, plant uh, carbon emissions are 24 percent lower than just in 2005. What we do need to have is a balanced set of uh, policies that allow us to build new base load coal power plants that would uh, reduce emissions 25 to 30 percent below uh, the old subcritical plants that dominate the fleet today. And that's what this policy doesn't recognize. It's not balanced in that sense. I was a little surprised that the president emphasized the public health aspects, preventing asthma, deaths and heart attacks rather than the environmental mm -hmm. benefits. These have multiple benefits. Health benefits are paramount because coal-fired power plants emit particulates, which cause respiratory problems. There are enormous environmental benefits as well, and I think we have to really focus on what the costs are that we're experiencing from climate disasters. We spent $200 billion in the last two years on extreme weather events. For those of us here in New York, Hurricane Sandy was devastating. There are other events all over the country, drought, wildfires. This rule is designed to get us on a pathway to clean and efficient energy, reduce the health effects, benefit American families, and I think this is really important, invest in innovation and technology that's creating new jobs.